All right, we're live with another The Week in Final Cut Pro. How's everyone doing? Please, as always, let me know down in the comments if you're having any issues with audio or video. But I think everything is good, even though I haven't streamed in like three weeks. So big show today. We've got a lot to cover with this Final Cut Pro 10.7 update. I hope everyone who has updated is um, uh, bug and issue free, of course. Uh, I'm sure we're going to find out some things, whether there's issues with third-party plugins, all of that fun stuff. But it's good to see everyone here hanging out for a little bit of a later stream, typically streaming earlier in the morning. So glad to be on later in the afternoon. Maybe we can catch some folks uh, in other countries that don't normally get to tune in. So Let's dive right in, everyone, and let's get our Final Cut Pro tip of the day going. Um, I've got a couple tips here, uh, two, but they're the, essentially the same tip. So uh, we'll get that going, and blam, there we are. Okay, so I'm in a timeline here with uh, Final Cut Pro 10.7, of course, and we know about the new features for the scrolling timeline and uh, the collapse to connected storyline. So I want to show you a trick for how you can add a, uh, a keyboard shortcut for the scrolling timeline feature. This is really nice because the scrolling timeline feature doesn't have like a UI button or something that you can quickly toggle that feature on and off. You would actually have to go up to settings and then into the playback menu and then uncheck scroll timeline continuously during playback and then check it back on to have it enabled. There's no quick and easy way to do that, but we can assign it a keyboard shortcut. So if we go to Final Cut Pro and then command sets and then customize, you'll see I already have a custom keyboard set and I'm going to search for uh, scroll and we can see timeline scrolling here. Now I've already assigned it a keyboard shortcut. So when you pull this up, it'll look like this where the modifier and the key is empty. I assign mine to option Z, just hitting option and Z. And then that now allows me to enable and disable timeline scrolling so I can turn it on and off. So to see that in action, this playhead has to get to the middle of the screen before it starts scrolling and I can hit option Z and it turns off and I can hit option Z and it turns back on. Now, if you wanna take it a step further, you could program it to something like a Stream Deck Mobile. So here I've got Stream Deck Mobile for uh, my Ecamm Live, and it has all these buttons programmed, keyboard shortcuts and Ecamm Live. You could program the, the timeline scrolling feature to a Stream Deck. Now this is Stream Deck Mobile. You could do it to um, a, an actual hardware Stream Deck as well and that would allow you to toggle that on and off quickly. Um, so that's a pretty cool feature. I did this also for um, for the other feature, the collapse to connected storylines. If we go to command sets and hit customize and I switch to the default, and then we search for collapse, you can see here there is a default keyboard shortcut for the new feature collapse to connected storyline. It's shift command down arrow. I switched mine and my custom keyboard set to option A. It's um, all just one keystroke with your left hand, which is a little bit easier. You don't have to use two hands taking your hand away from your mouse or your trackpad to do it. I may, I may program this to my stream deck. I'm not sure if I'm going to yet, but um, it's certainly an option uh, if you want to do that. This also applies, of course, to other custom keyboard shortcuts. If there's other things that uh, Final Cut Pro does uh, and there isn't a keyboard shortcut uh, that is assigned to it or you want to customize your keyboard shortcut, like for, exam for example, if you want to blade a clip, um, I have mine switched from Command B to just the B key to make it simpler. You can customize your keyboard shortcuts um, to make those keystrokes a or those keyboard shortcuts a little bit easier to enter. So that is your Final Cut Pro tip of the day. Thanks for uh, thanks for tuning in to the live stream, everyone. It's good to be back. I know it's been a few weeks. I've been traveling, doing a lot of work, I'm having all kinds of things going on with family, etc. So I haven't been able to stream in a little while. But so it's good to be back. So who all we have here? We've got about 25 people tuning in. Let me know down in the comments. Who's here? Where are you tuning in from? Um, and we can hang out for a second before we get into some video recommendations. Before, of course, we get into our main core topic here, Final Cut Pro 10.7. 
and whether or not you should update. Um, it's, it's, it's fresh, it's hot off the presses. Yesterday afternoon, a lot of us were thinking it was gonna release on Tuesday, but it actually released on the very last day of November. So we got it um, nice and fresh uh, yesterday. I installed it, of course, right away. I have yet to install it on my M2 Pro Mac Mini, um, but I've got it on my M1 Pro MacBook Pro and my M1 Max Mac Studio, which is the only computer of the three computers I have that can take advantage of one of the features, which is the faster HEVC and H.264 encoding using like the segmented exporting feature. Um, uh, and one of my vidrex goes into that a little bit more in depth. Um, so I can see we've got some folks here in chat. We got Josh Satin hanging out from North Carolina. Hey, buddy, how you doing? Good to see you. Thanks for tuning in. Um, CEO of the Brand Network. I'm um, glad you can hear me clearly. He's tuning in or she's turning in from Philly. Nice. Um, we've also got Michael P. Schmidt hanging out from Germany. Michael, thanks for joining. Good to, good to see you here as always. Peter Downing, Saskatoon, Saskatchewan, Canada. Nice, Peter. Thanks for tuning in. We've got AAP Illusions from Richmond, Virginia. Thanks for being here. And Mike Felton, London. Nice. All right, well, let's get into some Vidrex, everybody. Um, we've got a few videos here, and, and, and typically on the, in the past, I have strayed a little bit from Final Cut Pro recommendations, but we're going to get back into um, some proper Final Cut recommendations. And of course, across the board, these are all going to be recommendations for the coverage that we're getting of the Final Cut Pro 10.7 update. So if you haven't tuned into Dylan Bates' video, um, this is a great resource for checking out what the object tracker looks like with the new machine learning setting. Highly recommend checking out Dylan's video on that. He goes a little bit into connected storylines or collapse to connected storylines, showing you um, some specifics on, uh, on how that works. Um, nice and quick, five and a half minutes. Um, so check out Dylan's video um, as your first vid rec here. Then we've got Jen Jager. Um, hopefully you all are subscribed to Jen's channel. She covers motion tutorials in Final Cut Pro just like Dylan does. And she's got a video here. I think she actually was part of the embargo. Her video came out pretty much right when Final Cut was released. So it's possible that Apple has given her early access to the software so she could have her video ready to go at the time of launch. Um, her video covers things uh, pretty in depth as well. Um, I know it's only about six minutes long, but she's you know quick and to the point, unlike me, who likes to ramble and go on and on and on, but she's another great resource if you want to see her unique perspective on the Final Cut 10.7 update. And of course, the guys at Ripple Trading, probably the most in-depth um, video here. They not only cover Final Cut Pro 10.7, but they also show some of the new features for Final Cut Pro for iPad version, is it 1.3 now we're on? The big feature, of course, being how to record voiceovers with um, the new voiceover feature on the iPad, which we've all been asking for since it came out, and Apple fortunately got that implemented very quickly. I know that's one of the features I needed in order to use Final Cut Pro for iPad more. The one feature I'm waiting for is the audio crossfades um, keyboard shortcut, the Option T keyboard shortcut that lets you automatically do J and L cuts between your audio. That's the one thing holding me back from really turning loose on Final Cut Pro for the iPad. Um, so um, this really covers everything, all the different feature updates, including how the new um, video and audio roles feature works. Just a minor update on that front, and I'll touch on that here later in the episode. Um, Dylan John Dickerson, I haven't had a chance to watch Dylan's. He dropped it this morning, but Dylan's got a video, another quick, quick, uh, quick and dirty one, five minutes, 17 seconds, going over whether or not the 10.7 update is hot or not. So I'm uh, gonna watch that later this evening to see what the verdict is. And we have a new entry into the Final Cut Pro reporting. I don't recall Petapixel doing any coverage on Final Cut Pro in the past. Maybe they've touched on um, Final Cut Pro for iPad coming out, things like that. But this feels like it's their first video actually covering the update. Now, I don't. I think they got early access as well, so they may have partnered with Apple, got early access to the app so that they can make their video. Um, but they really cover the object tracker. So if you're someone who really wants to see more about the object tracker, more than I've been covering, um, they do a really good job of showing how the object tracker works. Um, and they also cover Final Cut Pro for the iPad. So if you're curious to see some more 
in-depth um, stuff coverage on the iPad app, then definitely check out Petapixel. Get subscribed. I'm actually going to subscribe right now because I have not been subscribed to them. They've just been coming up in my feed, and I've been watching them that way. Um, so those are your Vidrex, everyone. I'll have links to those down in the description um, soon. I didn't wasn't able to get to them um, beforehand, so we'll definitely cover that uh, in just uh, a little bit. Um, so I want to touch base on the poll that I put in chat, and let's see what we've got here for some results. No, I don't want to end it. Okay, so... The um, poll, if you haven't seen it in chat, please go ahead and jump in there. Um, uh, I've got, did you update to Final Cut Pro 10.7? So I've got 25 votes, 52% said yes, 24% said no, and 24% are waiting to see how it goes. So we have some, some people exercising caution, of course, and with Final Cut Pro, I don't ever think that that's a bad idea because we did have a little bit of a bumpy run there with 10.6.7 and 10.6.8 with some issues. Um, I think even 10.6.9 had some issues with the FX plug um, code base uh, that was causing some issues with FX factory plugins and other title based plugins. So you certainly don't want to update if you're not sure if some of your essential third party plugins are going to be derailed from that update. Um, so definitely, um, you know, hang out on this channel. Subscribe here. I am using Final Cut 10.7. I'm going to be using it all next week. Uh, and if I come up with any issues, problems, bugs, whatever, I will certainly report on it as they come in. And also, as you report to me, whether it's in the comments, on social media, grab me. Um, I'm on Twitter and Instagram. You can certainly reach out to me if you're running into any issues with Final Cut Pro 10.7. We always want to know what kind of bugs, issues, plug-in stuff is going on. Um, so if you're a brave one like me who's an early adopter, definitely get that info in there. We've got uh, Clays from Sweden tuning in. Nice. Um, we got AAP Illusions. Dylan did a nice little demo of the new tracker. Yes, definitely recommend that video like I just did. Um, thanks, Brandon. Um, I'm hot or not? Uh, I hope I hope I'm hot, buddy. I hope I'm 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 hot. Let's 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 hope so. Um, we've got uh, Luis in here. Ten seven. I vote hotness. I agree. Um, and then uh, uh, saying hi to everyone, Luis, Mr. Camera Junkie. Uh, definitely a good channel to check out, especially for streaming. If you're curious about my stream live stream, um, eCam Live link down in the description. If you you want to check out the software I use to stream, um, definitely worth looking at. So, um, yeah, a little bit of Apple news. I don't have a fancy graphic to put up. I'll put up an old one here. Oh, it's not going to work. Let's see. Will it work? No, nope, it's disconnected. Great. Um, so, uh, Apple news. We've got uh, uh, some software releases today coinciding with, maybe not because of Final Cut Pro, but coinciding with Final Cut Pro. We've got iOS 17.1.2 and macOS 14.1.2. Of course, minor updates, bug fixes, nothing major as far as feature goes, but I have updated all of my computers, my iPads, Everything is updated to the latest operating system again, so I can be at the forefront of all the newest Apple software to see if there are any issues with Final Cut Pro, Mac OS, or iOS. Um, so I've got all that updated this morning. It was quite the, it's always quite the uh, kind of adventure. I've got three computers and two iPads that are getting updated at the same time, as well as my iPhone. So always a little bit of fun to get all that stuff restarting and taking forever to install the updates, all that kind of stuff. Um, Yari's here from Helsinki. What's up, Yari? Thanks for tuning in as usual. Appreciate you always being a part of the stream. Peter's saying that he backed up version 10.6.10 um, in the library. I was using that updated to 10.7. So far, the bundle opened fine. I haven't had any issues after updating my libraries. Colors were a bit different on compound clips. Excited for the secondary storyline changes, as am I. Um, so that's it for Apple news. Nothing major, just those minor software updates. Um, I'm sure there's other stuff we could get into, but we just want to focus on our core topic today of Final Cut Pro. Um, and that brings up the wrong graphic. Yay, an old graphic. Awesome. I actually put the new graphic in, so I'm not sure why it's not working. Thanks, um, you know, thanks, uh, Matt, for your user error. Whatever, uh, whatever would you do if you didn't have at least one goof up on a live stream? Um, 
So I'm going to end this poll, 34 votes. Let's just recap real quick before I end it. Did you update to Final Cut Pro 10.7? 50% said yes, 29% said no, 21% waiting to see how it goes. So let's end that poll, and I've got a new one scheduled here. I'd like... Guys, like I, I did like a whole like plan. I produced this episode. I've got a whole workflow going. So we're gonna start a new poll. Um, let's see here. What is it? What did I? Let's see. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna get into some feelings. How do you feel about the FCP 10.7 update? Um, yay! Boo! And a third option, me. I throw some emojis in, but it's going to take too long. So I've got a new poll going in. Hit up this poll and let me know how you all feel about the Final Cut Pro 10.7 update. I know we all had our feelings formed back when it was announced at Final Cut Pro Creative Summit. A lot of us were kind of like, man, it's not enough. We want auto captions. We want more audio mixing, all this stuff. Um, so I'm curious what everybody thinks. I'm going to take a little drink here and mute my mic so you don't have to listen to me take a swallow. All this talking, I feel like uh, like the Micro Machines guy. I get like a little bit of adrenaline when I do the live stream because it's always so exciting. And it's always a little nerve-wracking because I haven't done it in a couple weeks. So I'm always worried something's going to go wrong, like putting up the wrong graphic. Woo! Um, so yeah, we got Ben in, in uh, the stream today. What's up, Ben? Thanks for jumping in. And uh, Sky London, of course. Thanks, Guy, for tuning in, as always. Always enjoy the live streams. Thank you so much. I always enjoy doing them, especially when it's been a hot minute. Um, just found out I still have 1064 archive from a previous update. Nice. I have all of my old versions of Final Cut Pro dating back a couple years. So just in case... Um, Carol, Iowa. Nice. You're in my neck of the woods. I'm in Iowa. I think Carol, I feel like Carol's more uh, Eastern Iowa and I'm Western Iowa. Um, Michael's saying, well, it's nice, but not really a big update. It's kind of a big update in the context of the recent updates of Final Cut Pro, but in the big picture updates of NLEs, of updates of all time, it is definitely a minor update with these features being quite minor, especially collapsed to connected storylines. It was not as robust and powerful as I was thinking it was going to be. I had referenced before that I thought it would be kind of um, an open compound clip. Whereas this really is taking the feature in Final Cut that lets you collapse to primary storyline, and it's just letting you do that, but doing it to a secondary storyline. We'll, of course, get into that in Final Cut and walk through it with all of you guys. And if you have any feedback while I'm demoing some of this stuff, you can certainly ask questions, and I'll try to do some stuff. Um, let's just look at poll real quick. 21 votes. How do you feel about the Final Cut 10.7 update? We've got 48... 48% saying yay, 5% saying boo, and 48% saying meh. So, uh, you know, a pretty uh, a pretty uh, interesting response, I think, and one that is uh, mostly expected. But it's good to have the, the hard numbers and the data here in, in chat. Um, <laughs> yeah, I've got the, the, the public library mug uh, from my wife when she worked at the Omaha Public Library before she started working for uh, Visit Omaha. Um, I may not be here for all the stream of a day job work meeting with people from the Midwest, 10 p.m. my time. Yeah, it's late, Ben. You, 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 uh, normally, we've got the early live stream, so certainly understand. No big deal as far as that goes. Oh, boy. Let me catch my breath here. This stuff is crazy. We've got 43 uh, people in the chat, 39 right now. If you haven't hit the like button, please do me a favor, hit the like button. And if you're not subscribed, of course, do subscribe to the channel because I do try to do regular live streams all about news pertaining to Final Cut Pro. Um, and, of course, videos about Final Cut Pro and Apple Tech as it pertains to video editing, specifically with Final Cut Pro. So one thing that I overlooked when I covered um, my, my in my video that I made uh, very quickly yesterday using Ecamm Live was that there's a pro video formats update that we need to check out. So for all of you who have done the update, please make note that if you go to system settings uh, and then go up to uh, general and then software update, I've already done the update on my end, you're going to see a pro video formats update here along with the Mac OS 14.1.2 update. So you're going to want to make sure that you do that update on the off chance that you've got maybe one of those a quirky codec or a codec that got an update in the pro video formats. You're going to want to make sure that's updated so you're not seeing any black frames or any issues with your video files in Final Cut Pro. This is the website that Apple has to manually download the pro video format 
formats update, but you can do it through system settings as well, and I prefer to do it that way. Um, so I don't have to download something and double click it and all that kind of stuff. So please keep this in mind. Let's just double check the release notes in Final Cut Pro 10.7. Um, automatically scroll the timeline. We'll talk about that here in a second. Increase editing efficiency by combining a selected group of connected clips into a connected storyline, which we'll get into as well. It is going to be a little bit of a rehash from what I covered in my video that I released yesterday. Um, and I, of course, want to engage with all of you while we go over it so I can get your feedback or answer any questions that you have and go from there. Um, view both the video and audio roll colors to easily see the organization of the timeline at a glance. A much, a much requested feature here from Apple with Final Cut Pro, and I'll talk a little bit more about how I wish maybe we could take it an extra step for some of us that are maybe a little bit more obsessed with minor control uh, of how we view our timelines. Um, see improved results when using the object tracker. I probably won't get in the object tracker because I didn't get footage together to you know, do object tracking and have everything kind of laid out the way that I, I would want to to properly demo that. Um, and some of the other Final Cut Pro um, YouTubers covered it, so uh, you can check out some info on that there. Um, HEVC and H.264 files, uh, faster exporting, and of course, some bug fixes. Um, and just touching base on the iPad update, I know not a lot of you are using it, um, but uh, they did have some updates for that. The record voiceover update, um, some new color grading presets, new titles and generators, increase um, editing efficiency by grouping connected clips. So they have the collapsed connected storyline feature in Final Cut for iPad, and then more control of stabilization in the pro camera mode. Um, this is nice that we can now use storylines in Final Cut Pro for iPad. That was something certainly missing from the first two versions that came out. So I'm glad to have that. And of course, we can ungroup those uh, clips in a storyline using Shift Command G um, and a few other keyboard shortcuts that have been added. Some of, some of the big improvements that they've done with Final Cut Pro for iPad is just adding a ton of keyboard shortcut functionality to the app for those of you that are using the Magic Keyboard um, case thing with your iPad Pro. I don't use it a ton because I really love editing with the Apple Pencil and my hand versus um, the keyboard and doing all the keyboard shortcuts. Uh, obviously a ton of um, improvements and fixes here as a brand new piece of software. They're going to get all that stuff released. But let's take a look at Final Cut. And uh, I'm just going to double check in chat, make sure we didn't have anything um, uh, that I overlooked. Um, we got, yeah, still on 10.6. Josh is waiting uh, <laughs> until it's safe to update. Um, Sergio, we were so starved for new Final Cut features that we would gladly accept any crumbs Apple gave us. Yeah, that is a little bit of the sad reality is we are kind of hanging on to these crumbs here in the update. And um, when we see three, four, five features added, you know, it uh, gets us excited when people that are using Premiere Pro, DaVinci Resolve are getting significant um, much requested features added to those apps, and we feel sometimes like we're a little left behind and forgotten. Um, but the Final Cut Pro Creative Summit really did a lot for me to uh, restore my faith that Apple is truly dedicated to Final Cut Pro, and the Final Cut Pro team is moving on um, a five, six-year plan um, as far as the as far as the future of the app goes. So we know it's not going to be shuttered like Aperture 3 was. We're in good hands there. Uh, and I'm excited to see the future. So we've got scrolling timeline, of course. I can't remember if I have it enabled. Yes, I do. And this is one of the features that we've been asking for for years. Um, now that I've really started using it, I'm kind of reminded why I uh, why I wanted it, but uh, but 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 also forgot why I wanted it so badly. I had gotten so used to to just kind of doing this, and you can see this is part of the frustration, right? When you don't have scrolling enabled, even in the version 10.7, you lose your audio waveform unless you hit the pause button, uh, the space bar to pause playback, which I just, if I, if I scroll, I get it. But if I'm playing back, I don't have the waveforms there. Oh, this drives me crazy. Um, you know, I really relied on doing the scrolling myself, so I'm going to really have to train myself not to do it. Um, but I had gotten so used to scrolling, pausing, playing again, pausing, scrolling, 
that um, I, I almost forgot that it was a frustration. I almost forgot that it was something that was annoying because I had become so efficient and so second nature. It was so um, refl- it's such a reflex for me to just use the tra- trackpad to scroll the timeline manually. But now again, we've got um, timeline scrolling, and we're seeing that the audio waveforms are performing wonderfully. This will take a second for it to get to the center of the timeline window, and then scrolling will kick on. But the waveforms are redrawing beautifully with scrolling enabled. Um, I, 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 I don't understand why we can't get the waveforms to redraw a little bit better. I'm going to mute the audio so it's not competing. Um, why we can't get the waveforms to redraw when we're not using scrolling. Now, I will say, you know, if I'm going to be critical of this feature, it is a little frustrating that it, it's just a little jittery. Now, this is a 24 frames per second timeline, and I've heard a few people say that in their 30 and 60 frames per second timelines, it seems to be a little smoother. I'll have to check on that myself. Um, but... Uh, but this, I mean, you can see the waveforms, you know, beautiful, right? Even if I scroll while it's scrolling, the waveforms appear. But again, if we disable scrolling uh, and play back, the waveforms are gone. I just, <sighs> I don't understand it. A little frustrating. But what I really do like about scrolling, I'm going to enable it again by hitting Option Z, and it'll take a second to start scrolling. If we play back at double speed and want to blade clips on the fly, okay, we can blade while it's going. Now, for some editors in their editing style, this is like a miracle to them that this is happening. And I want to test something here. You see this blink section that's coming up where I probably stumble or have some have some, um, have some some issues? I'm going to see if one of my um, shortcuts that I like to use, the trim start keyboard shortcut, which is option left close bracket, I want to see if I can do that on the fly while I'm editing. So I'm going to blade this when I get to this blank spot. And then I'm going to have option uh, left close bracket ready to go. And yes, it does it on the fly. So if you want to be editing using blade and trim start, you can do that on the fly. And I think that is a big improvement. And it's going to take me a little bit of getting used to, uh, especially for some of these smaller stumbles. Um, you know, so we can hit blade and then option left close bracket, and everything just keeps going, which is really nice. Um, the other cool thing about this is this is a multi-cam, so if we double click it, you can see I've got multiple angles, right? I've got a wide, I've got a tight, which is just my wide angle scaled up, and then I've got a screen recording, and then I've got some audio angles. So I have three angles that I would use to cut back and forth between, all right? Now with multi-cams, you can pr- push the number one key, the two key, or the three key to cut back and forth between those angles. And now we can do that on the fly with the scrolling timeline feature. So as this plays back and the timeline is moving, and it'll take a second here, we can use the one key, and that switches it back to my wide angle. Then I want to switch to my close-up so I can switch there. And then I want to switch to my screen recording. I can hit three, and now I'm on my screen recording. So we're going to show that for a moment. And then I'm back to the wide. And then I want to go back to my close-up. And so we can do like a rough, a rough cut of a multi-cam now with the scrolling timeline featured. And if you're fast and you want to double time it, you know, uh, use the L key, press it twice to speed, speed it up, you can go through your multi-cam edit to switch back and forth between your angles much quicker. Now, this isn't as cool, I don't think, for a YouTube video where I have two, you know, two A-roll angles and then um, a screen recording. But if you're doing an event video where you have a wedding or a concert and you have three, four, five angles, now you can use those keyboard shortcuts to quickly, like, you know, basically live edit your video while you play it back, which I think is really cool. Um, uh, let's see. 
Michael, uh, the waveform issue is still there. Yeah, the waveform issue when you don't have scrolling enabled uh, still doesn't redraw while you're scrolling manually using your mouse or trackpad. Um, I saw someone compare scrolling timeline in Premiere and Final Cut. I like the Final Cut Pro version much better. Um, I'll need to check out the, some of those videos. I haven't used Premiere Pro in a long time to remember what it's like. Um, me too, getting used to not having to scroll the timeline. Exactly, that's something that I'm going to have to really program my brain to stop thinking of doing by default. Well, maybe I have to give the timeline scrolling a chance. I think with the blade and the multicam and the trim start stuff, I think it really could superpower our editing workflows, especially those of us that aren't using some of these apps like Time Bolt to automatically cut out all of the silent parts of our A-roll. Um, this could be really interesting. Um, hey, Final Cut God, been really enjoying your stuff on Twitter, and I'm glad that we're connected there. Thanks for tuning in to the live stream. Um, 7130, currently edit all my content on FCP for iPad. Smooth process with 4K60, but ready for more customizations. 100% completely agree. Um, cool, ignorant boxing. Yeah, there's some there's some cool stuff with the, the scrolling timeline. I think there's some some interesting things that can be used for that. While I'd love the other updates for machine learning tools, etc., it's nice that they're at least looking at some core mechanics, 100%. Um, yeah, so, so does anybody have any questions about the scrolling timeline? Like I covered in the Final Cut Pro tip of the day, for just to review for those of you who aren't sure, um, you can access the scrolling timeline um, in your keyboard shortcuts. Uh, oh, sorry, I'm just switching command sets. Let's go ahead and customize it. Um, if you're in the default key, um, keyboard shortcut, you can type in scrolling, and you can see um, that it does not have a keyboard shortcut applied, um, but you can apply a custom keyboard shortcut so you can enable and disable timeline scrolling with just a keyboard shortcut. Um, so that's a really helpful tip. But that's essentially what I have looked at when it comes to the timeline scrolling feature. Um, if you have any questions or are wondering anything about it, please let me know. Um, I wanna double check that I, if I had any notes that covered anything else. Yeah, so waveform again with scrolling enabled working really well. I'll show you real quick what happens if you start playing back with scrolling enabled and your playhead is past the midpoint of your timeline window. You can see the playhead stops moving and it waits to catch up. Let's actually go back here a little bit and do it like this. So you can see the playhead stay still until it carries back to the center of the timeline window and then you'll see it pick up. So that's a behavior just to be aware of. Um, nothing's going wrong or you know being you know weird or whatever. This is how Apple has designed it. But you can see how it just looks a little jittery. It just looks like it's like something in the program is like move. I don't know, move something one frame at a time or one pixel at a time as far as the timeline window UI goes. I don't, you know I don't know anything on the developer side, but it just feels a little. And I don't know that that's a bad thing. It's just, I don't know. It just doesn't feel like smooth like Apple stuff is is usually. Um, whether you're using the iPhone, iPad, scrolling websites, whatever. There's just a little bit of a jerkiness to it that um, is going to take some getting used to. Okay. So we can move on from there and start looking at collapse to connected storylines. Uh, I'm going to pull up another um, another video here. And we've got uh, just some clips here that I've already collapsed into a connected storyline. Um, and we're going to just talk about sort of what the spirit, I think, of this is. Um, and let's see, we'll throw in some of this stuff. And throw this in. So... For some of you, the way that you edit your B-roll, you're not, you're not as tidy as I am. And this isn't a bad thing. There's not some right or wrong way to do this because we all sort of interact with the timeline differently. Some of us need to see things visually a little bit more stacked up. But you can see 
that the way that some of you lay in your B-roll, you'll overlap these clips, and there's not like a cross-dissolve or an opacity uh, change or uh, any kind of compositing being done. Um, you, you know, you're just sort of grabbing B-roll. You're kind of here like, well, let's just bump this over a couple of frames. Um, and you're just kind of overlapping things to get things in place the way you like them. And when you play this stuff back, of course, it's all cutting. The, the, the rhythm of your edits are all there. But you've got this kind of step ladder stepping thing going on. And what this new feature is really meant to do is it's meant to look at all of the portions of these clips that are actually visible on the screen, okay? So you can see from this um, left side of the cut all the way to here, this portion's visible. Then this portion becomes vi visible of this clip, but the portion under this clip is not visible in the viewer, right? This is all basic stuff with Final Cut and editing. Um, you can see here we've got some overlap where this shot appears for just a moment and then it cuts to this shot. When we collapse to a connected storyline, we're basically telling Final Cut that we want to simplify these edits and put them in a storyline, but only use the portion of the clip that is visible on screen. So if we right click these and choose collapse to connected storyline, you'll see it does just that. It is literally just collapsing only the portion of the clip that is visible in your edit. And it's removing everything else. Now this is a destructive process, okay? It is, in a sense, I don't want to say damaging, but it is, it is altering your edit. And this is important to know because you really need to understand when you're using this feature that it has done what you intended. Because if you move on and do a bunch of other edits, and then decide, wait a second, this is different than what I thought it was. This clip isn't, wasn't this long, this clip wasn't this short. You can't just like select these and right click and say, undo collapse to connected storyline. You're gonna have to re-edit this portion to get it back to the way that you wanted it. So you wanna be very careful with this. Um, so just remember that um, while, you're, while you're doing these, these cuts. Um, I'm just curious if I throw in audio, if it takes the option away. You can see because I selected this audio clip beneath the primary storyline that the collapse to connected storyline option is no longer selectable. I can't do it, okay? So keep that in mind as well. This feature is very similar to what we saw with the collapse to primary storyline, okay? So if we take these three clips, I'm gonna press and hold option and duplicate them and drag them over here above this gap clip, right? Some of you would be doing a lot of gap clip editing where you'd have all these clips above a gap clip and then you'd realize, well, I want these down on the primary storyline. I need to clean up this edit. I don't need this gap clip here anymore. And if you select these clips and you choose um, overwrite to primary storyline, it's gonna do that, right? Now it automatically expands your audio because it's not gonna delete that audio. But you can see that it's essentially the same thing as collapse to connected storyline. It's just you're telling it you want it in a storyline, not the primary storyline, okay? Now if we look at our audio though, it's doing what it does with the overwrite to primary storyline. We can still see that all of our audio extents are there. Okay, so keep that in mind as you navigate this feature. Um, so what was my disappointment with this feature? If we look at this and put it into a compound clip, um, which is just option G for those of you, um, we'll just call this CC demo, I'm gonna put it in footage, right? We've got a new compound clip and if I double click it, we go into our new timeline, and those clips exist within that compound clip the same way that you see them here. What I was thinking this was going to be, I'm um, gonna Command Shift G to undo my compound clip, which is one of the advantages of a compound clip. You can uncompound it, whereas the connected storyline, you can't undo that easily. I was hoping that this collapsed connected storyline was going to essentially make it 
an open compound clip. Because when we use a compound clip, um, call this CC Demo 2, and then you want to go inside of it, I can't watch this back but still hear all the audio from my main edit. I lose the context of my video when I'm looking inside of a compound clip. And that can be frustrating, especially someone like me who edited a lot of concert content to music. I would need the music in there so that when I would cut these to the beat of the, of the music, I knew what the music was. And so that's what I was hoping this feature was gonna be. It was gonna be this kind of open compound clip that you could expand and contract um, and, and, and be able to make changes to the edit without, um, without losing the context of your timeline, but still having everything in a, a, a compound clip-like container, okay? Now, I'd still love a feature like that, but I'm sure there's some serious challenges with that. Um, so keep that in mind. Now, we've got some questions, so I want to make sure that we cover all that. Um, um, oh, so Raphael's the one who compared Premiere and Final Cut scrolling. I'll definitely check out his video for sure then. Um, Ben's asking, what happens when you drag the playhead while playing with scrolling on? Okay, let's, so we'll go, we'll go back and just check that for Ben real quick because that's a good question. Um, so let me go back to that other timeline. And we'll hit play. And so Ben's saying, what happens when you drag the playhead while playing with scrolling on? So if I drag the playhead, scrolling stops temporarily, and then it resumes um, after you've let go. So that's how that works. We'll go back to our other timeline and continue to look. Um, do you think Apple's slowly letting go of FCP? Like I said before, Ivan, no. At the Final Cut Pro Creative Summit, the Apple team spoke with the, the, the Final Cut fans that were there, the Final Cut YouTubers, and they said that they have a five to six year plan for the app. So um, I am 100% convinced that the app is here to stay. Um, um, we'll be testing the scrolling timeline on some old mini DV videos. Uh, I've been transferring to SSDs the last few weeks, been holding back on the editing until the release of 10.7. Great, so that's a, a good instance where that's gonna help you. Um, can't remember, are you able to connect audio to a secondary storyline? No, you can only connect audio, actually, no, you can only connect audio to a primary storyline. So you can see here, I'm gonna do command option click to move the connection point of this audio and it will only connect to the primary storyline as far as I understand, even if there's a gap clip there. If anybody knows differently, please correct me. Some of the, Sometimes answering these questions on the spot, uh, I forget some things. I get that live stream brain and forget. Can you use the range tool inside of a collapsed timeline? Let's take a look. So if we select these, then make sure, Luis, that I'm doing what you think, um, what you think uh, <laughs> I'm supposed to be doing. Um, collapse the connected storyline and then use the range tool. You can certainly, looks like, use it because really it's just converting those clips into a secondary storyline, which I don't think is the nomenclature anymore from Apple. I keep calling them secondary storylines. They just call them storylines, I believe, and then the primary storyline. So the primary storyline, again, being the center of your timeline and the storylines being anything above or below because you can put audio in a storyline as well. I always call them secondary storylines because I could have sworn that was the original nomenclature for uh, that, but they probably have changed. They, they have obviously changed it. Um, note about collapsing to secondary storyline. If you expand audio rolls after collapsing, you still have the original duration of those clips. Um, okay, good to know, Ben. Good note. Um, uh, we got Marcos here, scrolling timeline, finally sort of smooth on my M1 Max, a bit jittery on my Intel Mac Pro, but a great addition. Yes, Marcos, thanks for tuning in. Um, and I know scrolling timeline for a lot of the folks in our Discord um, with Knut, um, those have been something that's been uh, asked for for a lot, so I'm glad you're excited about it, Marcos. Marcos, I would love in chat if you let me know how the video rolls feature is and that's a good way for us to to touch on this one as well so we've got um, some video rolls here i'm going to uh, show you guys what this new feature is that lets you look at video with its intended role 
and the audio with its intended role when you um, expand the audio. So you can see here, we've got, um, I'm gonna make this taller and reduce my thumbnail size. So you can see here we've got uh, where I assign this a video role of stills. And the audio, of course, still has the dialogue role assigned to it. When we collapse this, it goes back to Final Cut's default, um, which is it's always going to show the color of a video clip based on the audio role, the role of the audio that's part of that clip. But if you expand, it'll show the video in the video role color and the audio in the audio role color. This is something that we have wanted for a long time. Now, I personally, I personally wish that there was a preference in Final Cut that allow me to say, I want all video clips, no matter what the audio role is, to be colored uh, to the video roll color. So if this is orange, even if I have this collapsed, I want a preference that says, I don't care about the audio, okay? This is just background noise that I'm using as a sound bed, and I want this clip to be purple because it's B-roll, okay? I don't care what the audio role is. I still want the audio to have a role assigned to it, but that's not my top priority. My top priority is looking at my timeline with everything being color-coded. And so you can see here, this is a video on my second channel, a photography channel. All the photos are colored with um, the orange color but there's no audio on the photographs I have in Final Cut, so the color is gonna be orange. Whereas the video clips, because they have audio on them, even if I change this to, um, let's go ahead and edit rolls, and I switch this to, um, we'll just call it B-roll, and I change it to this red color. If I apply that uh, video roll, a B-roll, it won't do it because it's defaulting to the audio roll. Unless I hit Control S and expand it, then I can see the red for the B-roll video portion and the blue for the dialogue audio portion. I personally just want to be able to tell Final Cut, cool, let me take it a step farther. I want to just make my video clips whatever color I want. I don't want it to be dependent on the audio roll, so please just let me do that. Um, the other option, of course, is if you absolutely do not need the audio, you can detach the audio and delete it, and then that will make your whole clip that color. You can also, when you're bringing clips in, you can choose to only bring the video in. Okay, let's say your clip has audio on it, but you could not care less about the audio. It's just background noise from your internal microphone. You don't give you don't give uh, two poops about it, okay? <laughs> so uh, you can choose this video only mode, all right, by hitting Shift 2, and every clip that you bring in from your browser down into your timeline is only going to have the video. And therefore, if you want the roll color assigned to it, it's going to have that color. So let's take a look um, at this. We'll pull a clip in here. I'm gonna do Shift 2 uh, to put it in video mode. I'm gonna mark it in out. I'm going to assign this a video roll um, of B-roll, and then I'm going to hit Q, and you can see because the audio isn't a part of it, it's colored in red. But if I switch out of that mode and do all, and I bring the same clip in, it's blue because the audio is in it, and it is marked as a dialogue audio roll. So that's a little thing that drives me nuts. Um, <laughs> let's see here. Uh, Luis is saying, I agree, I just haven't tried it. And Matthew said it's destructive. Just checking, absolutely. Um, use the range tool to move the, the cut location. So are you saying the trim tool, I think, is what you're saying, Luis? So let's take a look at that. We'll um, collapse these. All right. And we will right click. I forget what was my keyboard shortcut? Option A. Uh, maybe I didn't assign it. It's still, oh, it's the default. I'm in the default keyboard. So let's go command sets, custom, and then that'll switch to, uh, you'll see in the menu here, it switches to option A because that's my custom one. All right. So now if we use the trim tool, right, 
we can't change the edit point. So this is a great question, Luis. It has, now can we s slide? No. Now before, now let's just double check that this isn't actually the beginning of the clip, right? So it is, this is the beginning of the clip. So what we need to do is we need to, um, we need to trim these up a little bit so that we have um, not, the not the start of the clip at the beginning, okay? And we'll see, because I, I think this is still going to do what you're hoping it's going to do, Luis. It's it's not going to prevent you from um, editing using the trim tool. Okay, so let's select all these, and then Option A, and then let's use the trim tool. I think this is what you're asking, Luis. Yeah. So now that we've adjusted those edits, of course we can. So it's still going to allow you to. Um, to make those adjustments, okay? So keep that in mind. Great question. That's a nice little detail. Um, can you test to see if video rolls can be changed on multi-cams? Um, so let's pull up my multi-cam. And we'll do, um, I don't know, a roll. Apply, and then we'll do assign video roll of A roll, and then Control S. And so you can see on the multi-cam, if we detach the audio, we can have the color here, okay? Um, I don't know if you're asking about inside, though. Like if we assign video rolls here of A roll, which it did automatically by assigning it outside of the clip, like this. Right? And this is audio. Okay. So again, if we control S it, and then if we switch the angle to that screen recording angle, and then control S it, it stays blue. So I don't know if that's what you're hoping for. Um, Final Cut God, but definitely let me know if that's what you were hoping for and if that's different than what you were expecting. Um, I'm going to reassign that video, and then I'm going to change the angle to my wide. Okay? All right, so Marcos was replying, video rolls are now on par with audio rolls. That's a great new feature that actually makes video rolls useful. Exactly. So what I was talking about is I can't really use video rolls if it's always going to default color the clip based on the audio roll, even if I expand the audio. Like, what's the point of having video rolls other than when you're at the end of a project and you want to kick out certain video rolls for visual effects or whatever it is that you want to, you know, separate your exports into different roles. Um, it didn't really help you to have a visual understanding of your timeline um, uh, while you were working. And, and maybe Apple thought, well, this is really only going to be used when you're exporting your video and you need all the different roles to be exported separately as separate video files. Well, a lot of us, because of other NLEs that allow you to color code your clips, whatever you want, uh, have gotten used to using that as a visual marker, a visual way to, to kind of see, like orient yourself in your edit. Oh yeah, that's, you know, these are all the act one clips or these are all scene one, act one, um, using different colors or, or different types of footage, whether it's a VFX shot, um, uh, you know, uh, maybe people mark uh, medium wide and close up angles in different colors, whatever they do to, to have a visual understanding of their timeline. Um, can you do a trim edit in a collapse storyline? So we went over that. Looks like you can. Um, was hoping they would add more non-destructive editing paradigm options like connecting to storylines or connecting clips to the clips, which in a more tidy line is less needed, but still totally hear you. I know that some of you want more control over how clips connect to other clips, um, but Apple is really locked on that. I do think that they might, if they maybe had a setting that allowed you to enable sort of that mode, um, a mode of, I want to be able to connect clips to whatever clips I want, and I'm okay with the consequences because I know what I'm doing. Whereas a, a beginner or amateur editor, um, that could really cause some issues if some of those behaviors happened by default. Um, if you made roles like Cam 1, Cam 2, Cam 3, expand audio, you may see multiple color in the video assets. 
Okay, Peter, thank you for that. Um, please, anybody, hit me up with more questions um, if you have any. Um, I'm getting down to the wire here, 3.30. I'm going to probably bow out at about 3.35, so 10 more minutes, um, because I have to pick up my kid from uh, from preschool, or from daycare, not daycare, uh, grade school. Uh, live stream brain happens to the best of us. So um, we went over collapsed and connected storylines. We went over video and audio roles. Like I said, I'm not going to go in depth on the object tracker um, enhancements. I'm going to save that for the other folks. Um, that's something that I still haven't even touched yet. I haven't even gotten my feet wet with it, so I want to try to explore that a little bit more. And it's not a feature that I, I really ever use um, because Apple has made it relatively, relatively simple and now much more reliable. I'm hoping maybe I can explore that a little bit more with text graphics uh, when I'm doing maybe desk tour videos or something like that. But I hardly ever use it in my client work, and I certainly want to try to use it more because I do think it's pretty cool. Um, I can't show you what you're going to see with exporting to HEVC and H.264 using the new segmented processing update. But Jen Jager's video, um, she shows specifically how to enable that setting. So definitely take a look at her 10.7 video. I'll go ahead and just link it in chat right now um, so that you all have it a little bit easier. Um, go ahead and paste that in. Uh, so definitely check out Jen's video because she shows you what the actual UI looks like when you want to enable that segmented editing. And just real quick, I'm going to show you, um, we're not going to play it back, but I just want to take a look at um, what they what results they got with these export times um, with this feature enabled, okay? Um, so let's just play this. You're not hearing audio. Okay, so this is Petapixel's video, all right? And they exported uh, a version uh, on Final Cut 10.6.1, so they must have an old machine lying around. Um, and they had a 22-minute video that was exported on uh, an, uh, an Apple Silicon computer, and it exported in 15 minutes and 32 seconds. So a 22-minute video in faster than real time, 15 minutes and 32 seconds. And with this update in the segmented processing dropped in, 11 minutes and 52 seconds. So it is essentially half of real time to export a 22 minute complex video. Now they talk in this video, lots of layers, lots of B-roll, 4K, all that stuff. So um, a, pretty, uh, a, pretty, um, a pretty deep timeline. So this is something that is probably one of those features that's flying under the radar right now, or one of these upda uh, feature updates that's flying under the radar but continues to really revolutionize our workflows when it comes to um, the amount of time it takes to kick out exports of longer, large videos. Now, you're not going to see this a ton when it comes to your shorter videos, two, three minutes, social media stuff. You know, you're going to see maybe five seconds, 10 seconds, 15 seconds drop off. But, but you know, Marcos, correct me if I'm wrong. I know you're exporting, um, you know, for the television shows that you're editing, just for everybody watching, Marcos um, edited a show for Netflix called Turn of the Tide. I know, Marcos, I keep um, I keep uh, dropping that in, in, in uh, the live streams when you tune in. But you're kicking out multiple versions during the edit of that show for screenings, you know, I'm sure, you know, showing the director, you know, the people that you have um, that need to see that version. And I would imagine that this is something that's exciting for you running an M1 Max Max Studio to be able to cut those export times down, especially if you're down to the wire to get something ready for a screening very quickly. So I'll be curious what you think over time of that feature. Again, features that we tend to take for granted because um, we've gotten really used to the speed of Apple Silicon. And to me, that was one of the biggest most powerful changes to Final Cut Pro and the Apple workflow um, that we have with Final Cut Pro in video editing was the unbelievable speed increases we got from Intel machines to Apple Silicon machines. And now they've even taken it a step further. They've shaved off uh, three and a half minutes off of this edit um, uh, export, which is huge. 
Peter, thank you so much for the super chat. Um, excellent seeing 10-7 in action. Thanks, Matthew. Thanks for the super chat. I appreciate that. It goes a long way to support the channel. Um, so thank you so much. And it's great to see you in the live stream. Um, I haven't seen you in my earlier live stream. So thanks so much for tuning in. Um, what features am I begging Apple for? I think just what all of you are. More audio mixing um, power. Um, you know, we really want to see... Um, some of the features in the audio software that a lot of us use, whether it's Pro Tools, Audition, Fairlight, um, even Logic Pro, we want to see more robust audio options in Final Cut Pro for sure. Um, uh, you know, that kind of thing that I referenced earlier, like a an open compound clip, something like that would really be interesting to me as well. I'd love a revamp of, you know, how you stack of um, color grading effects. I've been using DaVinci Resolve to edit my 35 millimeter stills. It's kind of a long story, um, but my 35 millimeter stills are um, scanned, pro uh, processed, or sorry, developed and scanned by a company down in Wichita, Kansas called Midwest Film Company, and they use a Blackmagic Sintel scanner. So I get my 35 millimeter stills from photography with a LUT on there that DaVinci Resolve uh, is uniquely qualified to um, convert to a Rec. 709 image. And while I'm in Resolve, I'm like, well, I might as well learn these grading tools while I'm in there. And I cannot tell you how much I love node-based grading. I suck at color grading. I really struggle with it, but I want to get better. Uh, and the node-based grading is amazing. When I go back to Final Cut and it's all the layers and the stacking, and if you don't have the LUT on the right layer, blah, 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 things go wonky. It's just not the best, and I wish we could see some serious improvements there. And I got to tell you, Resolve's color grading tools are unbelievable. The way that adjustments in DaVinci Resolve affect what the image looks like on these very small but powerful and impactful levels is just unbelievable. And when I'm, whenever I'm editing in Final Cut, I just don't feel like I have that same feeling. Um, it's really hard for me to explain because I'm not good with the technical and engineering. I'm good with the emotions. I'm good with my feelings. And when I'm color grading in DaVinci Resolve, I'm just like, wow, this is, this is really powerful. So that's it. Still can't answer the poll. Didn't try it yet. What do you guys think? Um, let's take a look at the poll real quick. Uh, come on now. How do you feel about the Final Cut Pro 7, uh, Final Cut Pro 10.7 update? 64 votes, 56% saying yay, 8% saying boo, and 36% saying me. Okay, those are our results there. What else do we got? Okay, so Marcos chiming in. Thanks, Marcos, for uh, chatting with me through this. It is indeed. That's my top feature on this release. So we're talking about the HEVC H264 H.264 segmented processing feature update. The amount of time it will save me, it's insane. It's a coup by the folks um, at the FCP team at Apple. So we can't let that go unnoticed, everyone. As much as we get frustrated with these um, auto captioning features not being added, more machine learning features, AI integration, which is synonymous with machine learning when I say machine learning. People like Marcos, who are editing high-level content for Netflix, feature films, um, they have a sometimes rapid turnaround time to get a, 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 a preview of an episode or something for a screening uh, with the studio, whatever it is. And these can be very nerve-wracking times, not only exporting, but getting things uploaded, of course, if uh, Marcos, if you're working remotely, which I think you often do. So... Being able to shave this kind of time off, because imagine this, this is a 22 minute video. Marcos is editing 45 to 60 minute long episodes, or if it's a feature film, even if it's broken up into reels, you know, reel one, reel two, reel three, if they put the whole thing together and export that out of a timeline or take each export of the reel, put those together, then export that out of a timeline. If you're talking about a two hour edit, um, two plus hours long, and you're saving 10, 15, 20 minutes off of that export time, that is huge, massive. Now I, in working in concert video editing, we would sometimes be exporting videos out of Final Cut 7 to go literally before an audience of 15,000 people waiting to watch a concert. We would have stuff exporting, going to the video director, sometimes an hour before the show started. We really flirted with disaster, okay? 
Um, and any time that we could do anything to speed up those exports, it was of critical importance. So stuff like this for people in those really high stake situations, it's really important. Um, I can't find the update in the App Store. Has it been released in the UK? First of all, make sure that your operating system is compatible. Um, it requires Mac OS 13.5. Um, otherwise, go to the Updates panel on the Mac App Store and hit Command R, or navigate to Final Cut Pro directly, and if you are eligible to update, it will show Update when you go there. Um, Marco's talking about exporting a 50-minute episode. The time saved, I am excited about it and about the clear signs about the future of Final Cut Pro. Marcos couldn't agree more. And what Marcos is referring to, again, is we were all tuned in to the Final Cut Pro Creative Summit because we knew they were meeting with the Final Cut Pro team at Cupertino, at ha Apple headquarters. And those folks told us there is a five- to six-year plan for this application. We know that they have a Pro Workflows team. We know that Apple now is 100% dedicated to this app. And even though a lot of us wavered on that knowledge, I think that it was a mistake. Um, again, the transition to Apple Silicon, overhauling Final Cut Pro, building Final Cut Pro for the iPad from the ground up, these are all indicators that they are in it for the long haul. Even if we aren't seeing auto-captioning, and some of the AI machine learning features that we're dying for that the other NLEs have. Apple is light years beyond those apps when it comes to the actual craft of video editing, when it comes to the magnetic timeline, logging footage with the browser, navigating your edit with the timeline index, stability, reliability, speed, and efficiency. But yes, they are lagging behind in these smaller feature updates that would really help a lot of us that are doing closed captioning, on-screen captioning for social media, etc. So I agree with you. I want some of those features, but let's not take for granted some of the amazing improvements we've had under the hood as Apple has completely overhauled their entire lineup over the last four years or whatever. Um, Aaron saying great's here about the Resolve love. I I'm not anti DaVinci Resolve. Like I said, I use it for my stills. It's a wonderful application, and I am falling more and more in love with the color grading tools. I have tried to edit a video in a track based, the track-based editing, and I can't stand it. I think it's antiquated technology, and I can't believe that when DaVinci Resolve added video editing, I think in 2012, okay, folks? DaVinci Resolve has only had a video editing portion of the application, as far as I understand, from their Wikipedia page. They have only had that for 11 years, okay? And they started with track-based editing. All right, track-based editing is something that came from tape-based editing back in the 70s, 80s, and in my opinion, it is antiquated. It's like, it's like, uh, it's like driving a, a, a horse-drawn buggy, but inside the buggy, it's like a Tesla. What's the point of having a Tesla that's pulled by horses? Uh, I'm sorry, that's my opinion, and I'm sticking to it. Um, <laughs> uh, is it worth it to update? I think so. If, of course, you have third-party plugins, other things. Give it a little while um, so we can see if there's any issues, any major problems. But I am enjoying the update so far just in checking it out. And I will, of course, report on my um, thoughts about it all week next week while I'm chopping some broccoli on some videos. Oh, my gosh. I have to wind this down, guys. It's 337. I've got to go pick my kid up at 345. So I just want to say, of course, I appreciate everyone being here. And if you are a channel member, thank you so much for being a channel member. Our Broccoli Squad, the apprentices we have, our fellows and our initiates. I think I have one or two new members that I need to update this, so my apologies. But we've got Dan Lardy, Mike Kennedy, Stephen Ewart, Mike Felton, Dylan John, Martin Turner, Jim Eds, Raphael Ludwig, Ian McCausland, Chris Austin as initiates. Danny Grizzle, Discord Coach Keeley, Dylan Bates, Simon P. as Apprentices, DSD, Paul Duncan, Mr. Moderator as Fellows, and of course, Doc Rock, Lens Distortions, and Gungalia as the Broccoli Squad. If you're curious to become a member, there's a Join button down below. There's different levels from $0.99 cents to $20 a month, with some of those levels getting you access to my Broccoli Squad Discord server, where some of you who are in the chat are a member of. We have lots of conversations about Final Cut gear, etc., so you're welcome to check out the membership opportunities. Um, so thanks to all my channel members. Your continued support certainly helps me so I can sit down, 
chop some broccoli, make some videos about Final Cut, Apple Tech, and of course do all these live streams. So it's always great to have folks supporting the channel that way. And of course, thanks again to Peter Downing for your super chat of $15 Canadian. Those super chats, of course, go a long way to support the channel, and they're always fun to get while you're doing the live stream, so thanks so much for that. Florian, thanks for shop, um, showing up in the stream. Keep chopping, you too, buddy. I know you are uh, working out all the kinks of 10.7 eventually here, and I'm excited to hear your thoughts in our Discord server. Um, so I think that's it, everyone. Thanks so much for tuning into this live stream. If you haven't hit the like button, please do so. Uh, and if you're not subscribed, please think about subscribing because I love doing my um, sometimes weekly show, uh, sometimes uh, bi-weekly, tri-weekly, quad-weekly, um, uh, covering the week in Final Cut Pro and, of course, all of the video content that we have on the channel. Um, follow me on Instagram and X. I've got my handle down there at the bottom of the screen. Um, Instagram's great because you can DM me, and uh, I have made some good relationships there with folks who have questions or have some troubleshooting things that they need assistance with. That's it. That's all we've got for this live stream, everyone. I'm going to go pick up a kid. Thanks so much for tuning in. Until the next one, I'll see you all soon. Don't forget, keep chopping that broccoli. We'll see you later.